from a share scheme, Pim. Um, just uh, just in a second, uh, George. So welcome everybody. Um, another STC um, webinar. You're probably used to the format by now, hopefully. Um, so today we've got George Patterson from Hikchijik uh, presenting on building business re resilience. Should be fascinating. Um, as you all know, it's uh, this is part of a series that we're doing. Uh, we're very much hoping to um, progress these um, even um, when we when we're in a situation where we can do real life events again because um, they're pro proving quite popular and quite valuable. Um, so obviously these are being recorded as well. So at the end of the um, presentation, uh, we'll send you an email with all the slides uh, with your contact details as well if you want to follow up, and obviously the recording as well. Um, and then obviously we promote them on YouTube. Um, so if there's anybody out there who would like to do uh, a webinar with us, please get in touch. Um, and obviously, if you're interested in, in what's coming next, please come to the, um, the STC website where we've got them all listed. I think um, we've got events scheduled in until July 30th. Um, not all of them are, are on the website quite yet, but the majority of them are. Um, and there's lots of fascinating, fascinating stuff coming up. Um, also related to Innovate UK funding and um, you know how you can apply for, for bits there and how that works and what's changed and what's new. So that should be quite interesting. That's next week seminar. So do um, make sure you sign up for that if you're interested. Uh, so yeah, so please check out the SDC website um, and join us. And, and if, uh, if you as an SDC member want to run a, uh, a webinar with us, please get in touch. Um, we'd be delighted to have a chat with you and, and see what we can do. Um, but on to the business of the day. So I'll, uh, I'll hand over to George now. Um, who will uh, run us through his presentation and then we can do Q&A at the end as we usually do. So um, over to you, George. Great, thank you very much, Pim. So good morning. Um, I'll just open the slide pack. Um, my name is George Patterson and we're going to talk today about um, post-COVID-19, uh, what, that, what that's going to look like and, and our perspective on it. So um, we are in unprecedented times, but before I begin that, a little bit about Hixijic. Um, we are a, a National Cyber Security Centre certified consultancy. Uh, what does that mean? Um, uh, several years ago, uh, with the increased cyber threats um, affecting business uh, and not just government, uh, the government decided to have a commercial facing um, organization supporting commerce and, and industry, um, which is a branch of the government communications uh, headquarters agency called GCHQ. So National Cyber Security Centre was formed and um, organizations such as ourselves can um, apply for accreditation and we are um, sort of assessed. So we are working at that level of um, assurance and providing those at level of services to both government and defense and high performing customers. We provide uh, full spectrum cyber security, uh, including cyber incident response, so we can assess people, help them with their threats, uh, make them understand them better, offer um, a route to remediation and how to resolve it, which is proportionate to their needs and their threats. Um, and, and get them in a good place uh, and make sure that their um, organizations are much more resilient. Uh, and we also provide secure managed services. So some of our partners have decided that um, they will allow us to run all their like, servers, storage, compute, um, and we provide that to them and allow them to focus on their um, corporate you know, needs uh, rather than the, the technical. So what's the situation now? We, we are currently in absolutely unprecedented times. We've never really seen this in modern times, uh, and definitely since post-war, of entire economies being very adversely affected by uh, a medical emergency, or, and it's on a global scale. So there's a new risk landscape out here, and we must learn from it and not learn false lessons. So. The next event that might affect us all could be very, very different. So it's important to learn that the important um, how to build resilience, but also to have enough flexibility and agility that if um, the next event is subtly or, or significantly different, you can adapt to it and you can respond to it in, in, the, in the way it needs to be. Um, rather than just saying everyone's got to be remote working because the next event might not require that. 
So we've been looking um, across the space, across different sectors, government, industry, uh, looking at academia, and we've 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 been reading a lot of reports and, and understanding what's going to be beyond this. And a lot of people have been writing quite a lot of thoughtful pieces. But the big takeaways um, that seem to be for, for, for companies is, is threefold. First one is sort of recession. Um, we'll talk about that a bit more in a sec. The second is bank, uh, bankruptcy and consolidation. Um, and the third is, is cyber risks, cyber attacks, um, uh, and, and worry about the, assur the surety of you know, infrastructure and networks. So in the first one, with recession um, potentially looming for, for all of us, it's going to make it very difficult as private companies to operate in the ways we did in the past. So there's going to be a lot of repositioning. Um, there could be some staff um, restructuring, uh, and we've seen it in some of the, the larger organizations, but it's affecting all organizations. There's going to be a restructuring program within your organization to make sure that the business critical functions are, are supported. Uh, you might see that there are parts of your organization that are less critical to your needs um, and people are looking uh, and you can see again some of the large corporates focusing on their core business they might have had other things on the side different divisions and, and they're divesting in them uh, which is leading to a lot of um, churn um, sadly job losses um, and things like that that becomes a bit of a, a risk for, for all of us because if there's churn if there's people being laid off uh, and there's lots of uncertainty with, you know, the uh, furlough scheme and, and people are, you know, concerned about their, their, their security and their future. Uh, it can actually increase things such as um, what's known as inside of uh, threats. So someone who feels that they're either going to lose their job or they can find a better job or whatever, they could be um, stealing data or IP from the company um, to take it to another company as a sweetener or for they, they feel that maybe, you know, for some collateral to allow them to have some negotiating power if um, things change for them. So it's something you've got to be quite mindful of if, if people are actually going to be um, let go and your organization's going to restructure significantly, then you have to assure uh, yourself and your procedures and your people um, that you can minimize those threats and risks the other thing is that it's the people, as I said, you know, you understand who your core people are, the people who have risen to the challenge of um, working remotely, um, supporting the business uh, and being very, very forward leaning uh, in this whole sort of disruptive situation. So some of them, you know, in order to keep them, to maintain them, to, 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 to keep their uh, engagement, things such as training, which is a bit counterintuitive because with recession, um, it's that economizing and you're not gonna focus investment. So there is a risk that you might take some decisions uh, that, you know, at, at front, first point, look, they look really sensible. We, we won't do that investment this year, but then it could uh, make you more vulnerable to various, factors uh, as you go down the line so any sort of investment any sort of economizing has to be you know looked at in the round try and look at the downstream effects and the second and third order effects to make sure that that's a sound decision and it's not just about um you know increasing your cash flow increasing your liquidity and and they, they're absolutely valid um there, there's no criticism in them whatsoever but it's just you have to be careful you don't throw the baby out of the bathwater and say, right, I won't do this, and then find out that that was not the greatest decision down, down the line. Um, the other challenge with the recession is, is, to, is, is paying for all the support that the government has provided so far. So again, potentially there could be changes in, in the tax, tax regime, which will um, change your ability to operate and, and your freedom of movement. So it's something that has to be mindful of. Are they going to increase corporation tax? It'll be different taxes, new taxes, increased payroll taxes, and things such as that. On the bankrupt, bankruptcy and consolidation, um, a lot of people um, for ease, for economy, have been using third-party providers for lots of things such as IT and other outsourced uh, functions of your business. Um, they might not be core, but they're important nonetheless. 
So some of those companies, due to a potential recession, they might not be able to operate. Their, their business model has uh, been um, damaged to the point they can't you know, continue. Um, so that means that your third-party providers might be at risk. So you have to engage with them and understand and, and, and be aware of any difficulties they're under. Um, there's also the, the opportunity of cons consolidation, and that, that can be good and bad together because it allows... Um, opportunity to maybe absorb some functions that you were having outsourced or new opportunities that you've seen uh, and you've grown within this um, event uh, to allow you to bring new parts of the business on board. So it's not all negative, it absolutely isn't, but it's something we have to be very mindful of, of the partners, things such as supply chains, um, how are they going to be affected? Are they too distant are they in different countries is that going to make it quite difficult if um, these things happen again or, or restrictions are put in place and you know it's still not understood fully what's going to happen about air travel etc um, there is uh, the reduced markets there as well so we have to be sort of uh, quite mindful that some of our previous business is is, is not there at the moment uh, but new, there could be new business as well um, and the other thing as well, some of your competitors might not um, survive this, which is, which is unfortunate, uh, but we've also got to be quite mindful that the ones that do survive are going to become potentially more um, dangerous to you because they have survived this and they've worked very hard like, like, like we have um, and done really well, um, um, but they become more formidable competitors. So the market space that you're in could become actually uh, more um, keen and you, you find that you are uh, competing maybe even with primes that are now looking further down the chain see it as lower hanging fruit and um, we'll, we'll go for those contracts that, that hitherto they hadn't before so it's something we have to be quite mindful of of, of, of trying to build that resilience because that's one of the factors um, and finally that is that cyber tax and that's that's really our for, forte and, and and you know uh, focus area and you know because of this and because of the pace of what happened, it's had a bit of an abrupt or forced adoption of technologies and processes on companies. So, you know, home working has become the norm. Um, for some companies, uh, as included, we, we've always been set up for that. So that, that transition has been relatively straightforward. But for other companies, that's, that's quite a big leap. And because of the run on IT equipment, um, the ability to buy specific devices for business uh, might not have been there. Uh, there might have been an encouragement, especially in the early stages, to use your own device and, and use um, people's own devices and have it in a way that's not been assured. And that is a risk because you have, it lacks control from the corporate um, side and it increases the risks of things such as data loss because you're sharing things and it might be on a personal laptop using um, non-assured or non-corporate um, owned equipment um, and infrastructure. Um, the increased reliance on it on a day-to-day -day basis means that um, people are, 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 one, becoming stronger, so that's a very positive that they get much more used to this. Zoom is now becoming absolutely business as usual for everyone, and that's absolutely great. But it also increases the risk. There's more passage of traffic, um, lots more emails, people focused on this, um, which makes you more vulnerable to scams. Um, we're aware, uh, and we'll talk a bit in a sec about it, of some very sophisticated scams at the moment that are uh, preying on people and they're, they're putting time pressure on people and allowing, uh, and they look very legitimate. So it's, it's very easy to make a mistake. And because of this uh, forced adoption and, and the pace that it was adopted, um, companies might not have had the ability, um, and because of firefighting, deal with things like dedicated training to avoid this um, and give people the skills and the knowledge to empower them to make sure that they can be much more sort of empowered and allow them to appreciate the threats better and understand, um, you know, where the threats lie. Um, the other thing about the cyber attacks, as I said earlier, with, 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 with a lot of churn, with a lot of um, uncertainty and people leaving and jockeying for position, there might be um, both from inside that threat from IP, but some of the what NCSC and their American equivalent um, are, are stating is that uh, 
other actors are looking uh, and seeing the opportunity to try and uh, gain advantage over their competitors by, by industrial espionage. So it's again something, and an and, and STC because of the um, IP that's been produced because it's a low volume, high quality, high, high end manufacturing, that is very attractive to certain people that don't want to put the energy and investment into um, their own IP. So they'd be much happier um, borrowing yours and, 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 and not start, uh, starting from standing stock. So it's something we have to all be quite mindful of. So the economic shifts uh, we've talked about, you know, and it's about that there's less money, um, the market's more constrained, um, the competitors that remain um, are more formidable, um, and you know the government are much more. Uh, going to be intrusive in, in how private industry works. You know, there's the, 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 the one on move, you know, just for load movement, but how procedures happen. Um, this is all in, in the landscape as well with, you know, X and D EU. So there's lots of different sort of tensions um, that are not helping, you know, private industry at the moment. So that's, that's, that's something we have to be quite mindful of. Um, the sustainability, again, people are used to having, you know, um, quite long supply chains. All the challenges of them, you have little control over um, the far ends of them. Um, and so the risks are there and they're inherent. And there will also be, you know, as this, this develops and as this transitions back to a more sort of standard and business as usual footage, people will be looking, can we move our supply chains to different places that have less risk? So that sustainability and things that were either, you know, either very e easy to get at very low cost these things are going to change because um, it means that, you know, things like, such as PPE um, for the health sector and for the wider, you know, um, you know society, um, if they want to bring that on board and, and onshore back to UK and Europe, the costs are going to increase. Um, so that's something we have to be, uh, you know, aware of. Um, because we all employ people and it's a very much a people game, uh, we've all had the challenges and the responsibility of ensuring that our, our staff, our workforce, our colleagues are all okay, uh, which is quite difficult in a very distributed um, uh, situation and, uh, you know, situated. So it's that, and, and you know, some people are adopting to this much easier than others. Some people have um, less friction, less strains. They might have um, less responsibilities at home, so it allows them to focus at work, but they might, they might have more. So it's something we all have to be uh, very, very uh, careful to approach. And that is going to continue because there's going to be, an, I think that the reality is that the, there's going to be a much more blended you know, emphasis on, on home working, vice working in the office, and w which functions can actually you know, approach and, and occur quite straightforwardly at home and allow people to have that work-life balance. And there's other ones with manufacturing, obviously it's not that simple. It's you have to be in a facility to, to manufacture the, the, the products. And then that technology dependence. So, you know, the, the reality is remote working is here to stay. You know, um, there is going to be more line, online digital operations, which means that that attack surface is going to um, increase. Um, as I said, there was the adoption. It was rapid. It was planned as best as it could, but probably didn't have the longer term planning attached to it because it was about how to empower people, how to enable people to operate uh, and support the business at distance. Uh, and now this, now the phase, and we're sort of transitioned back to sort of a more normal footing, is how do we consolidate that? How do we plan for that? And how do we make that sure that that can work for everyone's benefit? So it's, it's that sort of technology dependence we have to be um, cognizant of. So the response really is to build resilience. You know, we've talked about some of the threats, some of the situations. But the resilience thing is about, you know, the ability to withstand shocks. It's the ability not to be as fragile as an organization so that when something occurs, it can be assessed and then addressed uh, appropriately, um, at least friction to the people and the business operations. Um, so it's about not just the people 
it's it, it's a, it's a more holistic thing. It's about the people, it's about the processes, and it's about the technology. So we have a distributed workforce that are mo to majority very un. Um, it's it's new to them. It's very much. Uh, a very novel idea and people are now getting on the groove. It's taken a long, long time. Um, some people have been, you know, furloughed. So it's very, very difficult. Uh, and to get back online in a new working environment uh, is quite challenging and needs a lot of support. Um, and that's where the processes and the policies come in. So it's to make sure that um, they're in place to allow you to best conduct your business. So if people have been, you know, using their own device, have you got a policy for acceptable use? Have you been able to support them? And even from basic things such as uh, DSE, have you done that health and safety assessment to allow them to work um, you know, at remotely, safely, with the correct and appropriate equipment? You know, and initially, there's a laptop, crack on. But now you've got to say, do they require things such as keyboards? Do they require screens? All the other things. And an ally to the actual technology is that have you got the processes? Have you got the if you're going to share information, how do you do it securely? Have you got you using proper corporate web addresses? Have you got a corporate owned Dropbox or, or, or means of data sharing? Are you protecting that data, you know, adequately and appropriately for 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 its uh, needs? Uh, because because these are all novel and new ways of working, it's a very big risk and very easy to make that, that people will do something with, with no malice, but they will lose data or they will share it in a way that is not. Um, protected in the way it should be and it can put the, the business at risk because you know you've got to form the ICO it may involve investigation it may involve some sort of censure so that's something that we have to uh, look into quite carefully With the people you know again as I say you understand where your core business are your absolute essential people that have kept the business going um, some of these people will because it's a life-changing event might reassess do they want to work more at home do they want to work less at home do they you know and there's things like that so we have to sort of ensure that these people have the support they have the training uh and and, and you know the investment to uh, keep them engaged with the company and that's incredibly difficult when you know cash flows reduced and um, some customer bases have have disappeared um, and they're going to take a while to recover um, or you've got to find new channels to, um, you know, sell your 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 your, your uh, products. So that is all um, things that have to be sort of considered. And with the with the technology, as I said, we've got the rapid adoption, and now the consolidation piece needs to be. We have to ensure that it is to corporate standard. It allows people to work effectively, uh, protects them, protects the business, uh, protects the customer's data, and just allows the business to continue in the direction of travel that you want it to. Um, the ability to operate is, is that just confirming the critical business functions and invest and build that resilience. So it could be, do you have... Um, because the previous sort of business continuity uh, norms have gone. You know, remote sites are, are important, but becoming a little bit less so because people can't go to the remote site currently because they have to work at home because that's what the governor said. So it's about ensuring that there's maybe, have you got your IT budget to cover all the, the new laptops and new devices that people require? Is there enough storage? Um, can your third party providers provide all this as you go forward? Can you they deal with that expansion, increase in volume um, and all that? With the supply chains, if they're new, are they assured? Are they working to your standards? How can you confirm that and, and do all that? Understand your risk. Um, it is, as I said earlier, it's about that, both the policy and the procedure. Um, it's to ensure that you are aware of the new risks that your business have taken on with the new ways of working. A lot of them can be more efficient, they can be you know, very beneficial, but without understanding what's out there, um, uh, it, it does make it quite difficult. Um, 
you know, the, and finally, you know, the control your environment. Um, I've been speaking to quite a lot of people and, and things, previous assumptions are being, you know, quite seriously reassessed. So I know someone that's got a, an example, global business, um, has about 2,000 people worldwide. And they used to rent floors and buildings um, to allow their, their team to operate. And they want to go to more like wholly controlled, smaller, but they can control the whole building. So they might need, you know, if you've got shared co-working space, is that going to work for you? Because you lose the control of, of, of the entire building. So there's going to be a trend for smaller, um, more independently controlled uh, sites to allow businesses to exercise the control they require on these um, um on the new business site because you know only having one floor in a building uh, you're, you're very much uh, at risk and and you're also you know the prisoner to, to to the building regs and they can close it down and they can do lots of other things um has to be greater oversight on the supply chain um that, that's always been there but it's just going to become more and more so because We've assumed everything's just in time. It's all really worked. It's been lovely, but the disruption in transport, the disruption in, you know, the wider supply chain because it's it's truly global now makes things incredibly difficult. So, re-engaging and and discussing them and understanding the the, the contractual obligations of both sides is is going to be key. Um, the tech, as we said, has to be assured. Um, we have to make sure that it works to support your business operations and it allows your company to be protected from both external and internal threats and to make sure that your customers' data is dealt with in an appropriate manner and they have the confidence of working with you because something like a data loss would be um, incredibly bad reputation if you manage to uh, lose your, your customers' data. Um, and it goes back to you know just understanding the threat space and it's about you know, what happens if these people can't work? What happens if they become ill? Is there depth in the organization to support if someone can't um, operate for, for, if they have to isolate or whatever? Uh, which actually is a great exercise to allow your business to understand where its key people are, where its um, pinch points are, and allows you to help design and um, ensure that you're, you have uh, that redundancy to allow you to continue and this whole situation has been um, very challenging but coming out of it there's been a lot of good lessons learned about how we um, have redundancy how we build resilience in the company and how we can um, operate under very difficult circumstances and, and finally you know it is incredibly challenging but the team has to be comfortable with um, flexibility with change. Communication is key, uh, both with the team, with, with the customers and all that. I would say, you know, from a governmental view, you know, there's been lots of mixed messages, which makes it even more challenging for us as, as companies to, to communicate to the team. But I've got no doubt you, like us, have kept our team fully informed as much as we can and kept them updated regularly to ensure that they understand where we are, where we're going, how we can support them, how they can support us and, and move forward in a really good and positive direction because at the end of this, there, there still is going to be business. We have to support that and we have to make sure that that will uh, continue and go in a very positive direction uh, going forward. And if just at the back of the presentation, if you would like some more information, if you want to talk uh, about any of your concerns, please don't hesitate to give me a call and we can have a chat and understand uh, your needs and uh, work with you to resolve. Questions? Thanks for that, George. Um, very, very interesting. Um, I mean, obviously, we'll, we'll open it up for, for questions now. Um, I'll, I'll kick off if I, if I may. Um, yeah. Because when this whole thing kicked off, um, Everybody, you know, us included, we're kind of like, oh, well, you know, we'll, we'll get onto Zoom or, or we'll do and we'll do webinars and we'll do this and we'll do, and we'll do that. And I think a lot of people kind of like had a go at stuff, um, not necessarily worrying about the cyber implications of that and, and how secure it all might be or not and all that sort of things. 
And so presumably from a tech point of view, you can now kind of like backdate and, and you know, put stuff in place to, to shore it up. But how, how would you know? Because I've, I've heard stories of, um, you know, people almost like having a, a dormant attack where they, you know, they find a weakness, basically sort of plant themselves in there, but don't, don't do anything um, and, and, and kind of wait for an opportune time later on. So if you now kind of like backdate and, and, and put stuff in place to, to secure it more, how do you know that you've not already been compromised and, and, and what can you do on that? I mean, presumably the answer is ring you, but is there, is there practical steps that, that you can take yourself to, to check that and, and show things up? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There's, we, you know, we, we, we provide a, an assessment called, um, we call it view risk. We, it's a web-based um, service. We have one of our engineers um, who's a CIS, which is a very high level of information security professional. And they'll go through with um, the head of IT and, 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 and people in the corporate on the C-suite that, that they need to be involved and understand your ways of working, your infrastructure, how it's um, set up and how it runs. And then we will give you sitting there a visual representation of the risk. And, you know, most people do incredibly well. And it's all about looking at where they're, they're doing really, really well and, and, and rewarding people and, and saying, look, you're doing that brilliantly. However, over here, you can improve by doing this, this, and this. And about a lot of these are not really about the technology, as I say, it's actually about the process and the people. It's to ensure that people are trained to understand um, so some of the risks, some of the techniques to, um, and to share information so you get a process that, you know, if you send something, it's got to be password protected, there could be policies on what the password needs to be, not password with two dollar signs or one, two, three, four, one. And ways and means of sharing those passwords. Um, and you know, they're all very simple and, and very easy to adopt. Uh, the other thing as well is most people, most companies are using, you know, probably Office 365. So you've already got the ability to share in a secure mean manner um, using Teams. So you've got, you've got your email, you've got your Outlook server, you might have Skype for Business, which we use quite a lot, which is your, your secure instant messaging. And corporately, we use Teams um, to video, to share information. So it keeps it within the corporate bubble. The challenge is when, when people have um, been forced through just necessity to say, right, you guys go home, use your, work top, your laptop, you know, hopefully you've got a, you might be able to log in at 365 but on a, on a, a personal laptop. So that makes it quite difficult because the other thing about it is that liability, you know, and also the, the challenge is, you know, people have homeschooling, so there might be only one laptop at home. So when does, when does the family use the laptop? When does the, the, the person who's working use the laptop? Um, uh, organizations I've heard, you know, were trying to get IT really quickly, but there was a real, you know, run in it. So it was very difficult to get, printing, office materials, screens, to, and you know, people were really keen to support their, their staff. So a lot of it is, is very straightforward. You know, we, we obviously can help, but if you're using an Office 365 account, if you're owning, using corporate owned laptops, and you, but this has to be all tied in with, are you all running you know, password protected services? Are you all you know, if you've got a central server point, has it, is it protected with boundary protection with a firewall? Is it monitoring and logging to make sure, and, and, and you know, the, the rights, me, I have as minimal rights because I don't need them. Whereas one of the engineers of the system administrator has all the rights. And again, it's about that level of access and usability. And you want to give people the minimum rights they need to do the business. So, most people are doing absolutely brilliantly, but it's so sort of challenging things. And, and it's, it's, if people are looking and saying, right, well, 30% of the workforce are going to work from home, an investment decision could be we need to buy them devices to allow them to do that uh, and make sure that there's a, a business service, be it whatever is your business needs. It could be Office 365, you know, other providers are available. And can you do that in-house? Can you do it externally? Do those people have accreditations that you think are important to ensure your confidence in them, they can deliver it securely. Uh, but a lot of it is just down to process. You know, are people given the, you know, what we did and we made quite clear, we emailed everyone and said the only way we are going to communicate corporately with you is on Sway, 
which is a Microsoft product. And it's, it's a, it's a web, it's essentially a newsletter and we give people updates using that. So they know that we are not going to, I'm not going to send an email and say, Oh, do this, do that and do it now. I generally, if there was a big decision to be made, you'd phone someone direct, they could identify you. You know, the, the, it's one of those classic scams. And I was at an event and this, this guy stood up and said, you know, you've heard about the, the, the finance director has been told by the, the, the CEO to transfer 10,000 pounds, but you can't get hold of him because he's on a plane. And he says, how do you think I know that's real? And he said, it happened to my wife. And his wife transferred tens of thousands of pounds and was victim to one of these scams. So again, it's part of that. And um, I think the size of most organizations in STC, everyone knows each other, which is great. And most people are being quite sensible. And if there was quite a big financial or operational decision, you would, you would phone the, the, the responsible person and say, hey, this is me. I'd like you to do that. And you, you would follow up in an email. I don't think most people would write, let's make 10,000 things and send them at this address without checking, you know? So a lot of it is there, but I think now in, in this new and the transformation, people are going to understand that there's opportunities. We can maybe have reduced office space. We can give people a better work offer with work-life balance and say, you can work at home three days a week. Um, but you know, we, we from, from an outset, we're quite a distributed team. We have corporate laptops, we have a corporate infrastructure, um, we have authentication, and just things that the companies, there's lots of things that you're already bought that can be implemented that will make you much more secure. So my, we've enabled two-factor authentication, which means that if I, you know, regularly I'm logged out of my email account, so I've got to log it back in, then it sends me an authentication, you know, and it, it ensures that that's all appropriate, right and proper, and is protecting everyone's data. Because uh, it's just those little things, and you've already bought them. So someone's going to come down and go, "Oh well, we can sell you this great box. It's going to fix it." You probably already have that capability. You've already purchased. So the, it, it's looking at what you've got. How can it help you work better? And it's just incredibly straightforward and simple things like two-factor authentication can really secure your business and um, protect. You know. We were speaking to the Southeast Regional Organised Crime Squad, and they were saying about you know 50% of all small businesses are going to be attacked. Fact, and that's really quite scary. But then they said about 50% of them, if they're attacked, if, if someone's attacked, 50% will go out of business, and that's really quite scary. And it's not meant to frighten people, but it just shows you the the sort of gravity of the situation. And and a lot of these things are are really avoidable with capability you already own. It's not about selling you new stuff. It's about understanding what you already possess, what you're already paying for, and getting the utility out of it. So, you know, we had a guy working for us at the um, College of Police and being a practitioner and supporting the customer. And they had, as a governmental agency, they have a, a government enterprise work, Microsoft account. And we want Zoom. And he's going, he's, a, he's an information security professional. And why do you want Zoom? Because you've got Teams. You know, it's much more secure. Oh, Zoom's cool. So, but someone's got to accept that risk. And someone's got to say, actually, that works for me. But, you know, you've got to download the Zoom onto a device. So it's another door into your organization, et cetera. You know, I'm, we don't have Zoom on our corporate laptops. So I'm using another device today because we've got teams, so we don't need another thing to do what we already can. So a, a lot of it's about just understanding what you already possess and how that can empower your organization at no cost. It's just about adoption, well, awareness, adoption, and then communication and saying, hey guys, we've got this, let's use this. It might be a bit clunky, it might be, but then the more people get it, the more training you pre present to them, and then people will innovate and go, hey, did you know we could do this? And you go, no, that's brilliant. And, and you know, before you know it, you're more productive and it's cost you no extra expenditure because you've already got it. Yeah, and I think um, if I'm right in saying that a couple of weeks ago on the forum, you actually shared a document um, to, to fellow members. So any STC members um, sort of watching or, or here today, 
if you go onto the SEC forum, um, Hachiji has actually uh, shared a document on sort of tips on how to safely work um, from home, and, and, and it might actually be a good idea to circulate that document to your staff to just say, look, you know, if you're going to work from home or if you're going to engage with the business from home, these are just a couple of things that you need to be mindful of and, and, and be aware of and things. Um, and I think you, you've always done a, a very good, good job of that. And um, I've kind of got another thing which, which might be slightly unfair uh, on your George. So I'll, I'll, I'll hold off for that for a moment. Does anybody else have any other <laughs> questions um, that they want to ask George? Um, you know, I'm always keen that, you know, now we have the expert in the room and, and they're here available to, to talk to us. Um, anybody has any questions, comments, or things they want to bring up or say? Yes, Roger. Right. Hi, George. Thanks very much indeed. Um, we're a slightly larger organization, internationally based, and we have uh, a well-secured network. It's German-based, so they are particularly keen on their security. Yeah. One of the frustrations that we do um, have to struggle with is the support. Uh, IT is becoming so much, as you've indicated, so much more important to a day-to-day -day running of a business, whether it be a manufacturing business or a service business. Um, if without the um, effective operation of that IT system, the businesses find it extremely difficult to function effectively. Yeah. So with an international business, we need to, we would like to have a 24 seven um, capability of backup and support. That's not the case. Often where um, the American plant is operating, our German colleagues are fast asleep snoozing or our Asian plant is operating likewise. Um, so what, what's your recommendation of how to do that? Do you outsource that sort of backup and security or do you have uh, an international base that is located in one location but is operating 24 seven? What's the best uh, from your point of view? I think it's actually gone back to, and I think it was mentioned in, in one of the um, Cisium's about the supply chain uh, a couple of weeks ago that you've already got relationships with um, a partner and if they're providing you're very happy um, but you want to improve in it because things have changed. Um, I think the first instance you go back and say, hey, um, we need this now, can you provide it? And it's, it's that simple. You know, they might say yes, but it can be cost X, Y, Z because there's additional resources included. But I think that's the first thing is to try and find out, as we've all said, everyone's reappraising what um, business looks like now what um, are absolutely critical functions and they have to run whatever. Um, are, they, are they under threat? What are the threats? So people do their own risk assessments. And then looking at how these things are enabled. And it's about that, as I said in the last slide, the controlling your environment. And, and then I would say the first instance is to go to your provider. Um, are you happy with them? And look at the contract and say, you know, you've, you've provided this. If we wanted a contract negotiation, um, you know, and, and, and that's what I was unfortunate you're going to say for that. Um, it, it happens to be our own parent company that's providing the service. So um, it, we have a, a fairly closed door in many respects. I think that then you'd have to potentially persuade that or you'd have to persuade them that you need some change. Um, and, you know, some companies provide that, you know, Chase the Sun, they have several sites to the, use the, the world time zones to their advantage. Um, and um, but if you've got discretion within your own division in the UK, uh, you know, we could discuss and, and see how we could help you and, and, and either could we do it ourselves or could we you know, advise and recommend you someone that um, would provide the services you need because uh, it is important. And, you know, these criticalities um, are the difference between success and failure in a business. And, you know, things like ransomware attacks, um, are out there and, and happening now. And I saw one earlier in the year that a bunch of cyber criminals, I think they were just like cyber hooligans really, and they took a bunch of cities in, in Texas to ransom and said, you can't do anything until you give us money. Um, and there's all these sort of uh, people out there and, and some of them are doing it for spite um, to give you um, a bad reputation. Some are just kids in the bedroom mucking around. They're just, you know, they don't really know what they're doing and they don't think of the consequences. So, yeah, I, I think if it's, if that's a bit, a bit more of a, a difficult one, Roger, and I'm more than happy to have a chat with you on it and see how, you know, um, we can support that. But um, I, I'd say in the first instance, you, you, you know, you, this is a new business. This is what it looks like. Can the supporting functions 
allow that to happen? And if not, engage with those that are providing them or those in charge of them to, 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 to affect change. Because if you need that 24 hour support or, or a higher level of, of support and call off, um, then it needs to happen and, 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 and submit that sort of justification to, to, to the relevant people to ensure that that can be flagged up and say, look, we need this because this is the risks. And then unfortunately, someone's got to make a decision and they're either going to accept the risk and bear it and say, well, you're just going to have to suck it up, Roger, or that's a good idea. Uh, and the best thing at that point is to have some options because, as you know, the best thing to do, if, you've, if you're coming with a problem to someone, it's always good to have a couple of solutions or potential courses of action uh, to give them, you know, and, and, and move that discussion forward at pace because, as you say, you don't want to be at risk um, of, of stopping your operations and especially something with yourself, I can imagine your supply chains are very, very intricate and um, interlinked. And, uh, and you know, you, there's lots of external dependencies which, which make you sort of hostage to, to others. Uh, and that's never ideal. Thanks very much, George. Um, does anybody else have any, any queries? Um, no, okay, so I'll, I'll, um, I'll fire my thing in, and, and apologies, George, this might be a little bit um, facetious, but um, previously through Exegic, I've been introduced to the, uh, the cyber kill chain. Mm -hmm. um, and if I'm not mistaken, then you guys shared that as well with the SEC membership. And that seemed to me a particularly good sort of methodology to take a really good sort of 360 look at, at your situation and, and identify where, where things happen. Is that something that you could touch upon or expand upon as a, as a useful tool, maybe? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, my apologies, as I said, might be unfair. But, um. I don't think it's unfair. I think um, it could be actually a, once we're either another webinar or potentially yeah. if... Um, once we are, we're allowed back in the building, it might be one of those good ones to have um, as a sort of an interest event and, 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 and talk it through. Mm. And, having, and that would allow potentially more than me and some of the more knowledgeable people in it than me um, to be in the room and, and discuss it and uh, offer some, some insights and some thoughts. But yeah, abs absolutely. Um, yeah, it's, this has really... In a, in a very positive way, you know, you've got to look at the positive as well as the negative with this whole disruptive event. But this ad abrupt adoption has sort of shocked some organisations into adopting processes that were, they were rather resistant to do, and then all of a sudden they go, "Oh wow, actually, there's there's quite a lot of merit in this, and and we can benefit from this." Uh, but as you say, without that underlying knowledge of the risks inherent, uh, ensuring that the the policies and the processes support the people and the technology, then it makes it quite challenging because throwing someone a laptop and telling them to crack on is all well and good. But it just is, it, it puts them, it puts that person in a really awkward position because they need to be supported with that underlying, well, this is the acceptable use policy. You know, when, when you're at work, you can't be on bet 365 on the horses, you know, and, and because the thing is that, you've almost got to think the worst case scenario because then when someone does it, you say, well, why are you doing that? That's a bit silly. And they go, well, no one tell, told me I couldn't, you know, and, and it's, 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 it's about growing up straightforward procedures. You know, we have people, uh, we have, because we have a distributed team, we bring people together. Um, well, physically we, we had to cancel the last event, but we try and get them together. We allow all the teams to brief each other of what they're doing to give everyone a bit of an insight and a bit of a feel for what they do. But then it allows us to give them a sort of update on the threats, um, a bit of training if required, you know, and other important things for the, for the organization. And um, I'm one of my roles is compliance in HSE. So I've had to send everyone out, you know, remote working um, assessments. Uh, we've had to provide some equipment um, where appropriate, you know, some screens, keyboards to allow people to conduct their business in a you know, safe manner. Um, we don't want to be liable for, for, for causing any injury to them because they're peering over a little screen. Uh, and it's about that and, and just ensuring that people are empowered um, and, and, and give them the, the boundaries. You know, this is from here to here is 
operate in there. And they're really happy with that. People want boundaries. People want guidance because having, oh, you know, you can imagine a tech startup, oh, just whatever you want. It, it becomes a wild west. It, 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 people feel really uneasy at that and it makes them very uncomfortable. Whereas if you're very sensible, grown up, um, and, you know, they, they, they will change. You know, we review our documentation and, and you know, things might change um, because, you know, people will be using more, more online and, and there'll be guidance on that. You know, things like Teams um, allow you to um, blur out the background. So that could be a corporate policy that, or, you know, Zoom, you can put a background so you can maybe have a corporate one, you know, and that might be beneficial to, to what you want and what you want to present. And again, people will be quite happy with that because mm -hmm. lots of people, if they're working at home, they may not want um, others to see inside of their house. And that's absolutely understandable. So a lot of it is about, I actually think most organizations have the, the means to do a lot of this really well. They already own it. It's just understanding the capability of things such as the, the Microsoft suite. I, I, I've seen people use you know, PowerPoint. I'm like, I didn't know you could do that. It's amazing. You know, it's trying to understand. And I've, I've also seen, you know, working with the government and they've gone buy another toy and you go, you can do that with that one. Why are you buying another one? Because there's an additional cost. There's an additional training burden, support, complexity. You want to strip it back to make it simple for people. You just want to allow them to do their job as easily as they can so they can focus on the job. They're not, well, how do I, work, how do, I do this? How do I work that? But do it, you know, in a matter. So, so things, most people are using Microsoft or Google Docs. Just ensure that the past, you know, and, and just take a little bit of time to look at it and go, look, what are the security um, features and, and how can they, you know, help an employer? And, 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 and it will protect your, your team and they'll be really happy for it. You're protecting your business, so you'll be happy for it. And it will keep the bad guys away, which, you know, and they're just looking for anyone. And they'll always look for a soft target. And if they hit something and it looks fairly formidable and it's, you've got a firewall there or you've got evidence pad for two-factor authentication, then they'll, they'll go and find some other poor soul that's not, not um, you know, implemented it. You know, they, they go for the easy. Most of them, they're not trying to hack the Pentagon, you know, for, 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 for our business, they either want to muck you about, they want to close down your operations so they can shake you down for cash, um, or they've got bad feelings or bad ill will against you and they don't want you to succeed. So a lot of that can be protected by keeping your team informed, keeping them trained, but giving them the tools. And that's not just the technology, it's the processes and the policies to allow them to do their job and they know where they stand and that that's what most people want they want to just know what can i do what I can't do and you know 99 percent of people will never think about doing some of the stuff that's an acceptable use policy but sadly you've got to you've got to cover that one percent that, that might want to be um you know better than cheltenham when you're when they, when they should be doing something at work yeah and and you guys have been brilliant in terms of of providing documents that that addresses all of that and, and really helps uh, people. So I, I would encourage um, any STC member to go to the forum and, and have a look there because it's, it's, it's really good stuff. Um, I'm conscious of time, um, so I just wanted to see if there was anybody else um, that had anything that they wanted to raise or, or ask. Um, one, one quick thing, Th sure. thanks for mentioning the check sheet. So, so mm. we put on the news section of uh, STC um, at the beginning of this, there was a, just some thoughts on remote working, but then we provided a checklist and it's just there to print off and, and, and just as a ready record to, to let you think about some stuff. But the other thing we've just issued and, and PIM publicized last week is we've been looking at the government um, advice for returning back to work. And it's about a four or five page document. And, and again, it's just a checklist. So it allows you just to think in a logical way through the government advice of um, how to safely bring people back to work. So in conjunction, hopefully you've got the technical on one side with the remote working checklist, and then you've got the, um, the physical in that if you want to bring people back to work. Um, it, it, it's something we use at all because we work with, we've got a couple of teams based on other people's sites. We work to their roles, but we also have 
you know, our duty of care to make sure that we, 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 we work to the highest standards to allow our guys. So we're more than happy to share that. And it's on there and it's there to be downloaded. So, so please do. And if you get any questions on either of them, please don't hesitate to get in touch. Um, and, and we'll give you some advice. You know, we've implemented Office 365 um, over the last year. Um, we're using Teams more and more. Um, we're using Sway, and we found that a really powerful tool to, to quickly share um, uh, you know, good news from the company and information. And again, that's, that's compartmented, so that means that only your team members can read it and access it. So it's, uh, it's good for that corporate comms function. And, and yeah, you've got the tools, work out, you know, understand what they can do, uh, implement them. But, but the other thing as well, just understand your risk. And everyone's got different risks. Companies have, have different risks. Uh, and don't be afraid of them. Just understand what they are, work out the ones you're happy with, and address the ones you're not in and, and a means that's in a way that suits your organization. And some of that's just accepting the risk. Some of that's, you know, um, avoiding the risk and some of, you know, transferring the risk. And there's lots of things, you know, so, you know, like um, for Roger, you know, transferring on the risk register and identifying that they don't have that level of support they require will mean that the, the higher levels of the, of, of the organization will have to at least acknowledge that there's a risk there and then they're sort of um, expected to deal with it in some way, shape or form. And yeah, that, well, I mean, even doing nothing can be a valuable strategy as long as you've considered it and decided that that's absolutely. What, what you want to do with it. Um, absolutely. You know, it's, it's, about, it's about managing risk. It's, it, understanding risks are out there. Yeah. but being comfortable and managing them. And, and it, it, it's not as scary. The first time you do it, it's, oh, I don't really want to look at it. But then once you do it, it's like, oh, that's not too bad. And, you know, it's, it's a really good exercise because it just it makes you think. And, and it, everyone will be great at it now because they've been forced. It's, been, it's abrupt adoption. Everyone's had to do it over the last 12 weeks, whether they wanted to or not. And they've, they've done it and, and probably unconsciously. They've understand their business and said, oh, and then when you look back, and if you just did it in a form, you can get formats online. And then when you go through it, you go, oh, actually, I've already done that. I've thought about that. We've talked about that. And we've already decided on, 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 a, on a way of, of, of addressing it. But it's, it's very good to remind yourself of that. And, and you know, there's, there's plenty of tools out there that, that you've provided previously, um, which is really, really great. Um, so I'm conscious of time. So um, I think we will leave you there. Um, so what I would like to do with, with the people is, so thank you very much, George. I think it's been really good. What I'd like to do with people here is run a brief um, poll um, to get your views on, on how all of this went and obviously give us feedback as well on what you'd like to see with future ones. Um, in the meantime, for those of you who've been viewing this on YouTube, thank you very much for um, viewing. We'll say goodbye to you now. Um, obviously, check out the STC website for further um, webinars coming up. Um, and then obviously, if you're an STC member, then please do use the forum because there's lots of uh, useful information there as we've seen today that can really help you. So um, please do that. But um, thanks for watching and see you again.